So let's get to hearing aids. When we talked about the dinosaur uh, in the old days, I think of a large one. I think that people were uh, in an audience and whing, they didn't know that this noise that was bothering everybody. Uh, we think about people, I, you know, I just couldn't fit it. Tell me about how you solve those problems. Well, yeah, back, back, in the, back in the day, as we say, the hearing aids were heavy, they were cumbersome, they could, they could whistle and feed back, they were distorted, there was very little that we could do to them to adjust them specifically to a person's, uh, person's hearing loss, their high frequency versus low frequency hearing. Um, back in those days, the people who wore hearing aids really, really, really had to wear hearing aids. People with mild, moderate degrees of hearing loss who could have benefited from them kind of stayed away from them because of all the, the side effects of them. Different now? Much different now. And we're seeing a lot more people coming in at, a, at an earlier stage of their hearing loss in that mild to moderate degree, which is important. Back a couple of years ago, Johns Hopkins did a, uh, a study and they looked at people with untreated hearing loss. And they found that people with untreated hearing loss were up to five times more likely to have early onset dementia. Ah, um, so if you don't hear well, you don't use your mind, and if you don't use your mind, that may have something to do with dementia? May p potentially a bit of an atrophying of, of, the, hey. of the mind, yeah, and, and also psychological implications. People tend to be withdrawn, um, not socialize as much, and right. And people who wore hearing aids and people who corrected their hearing were much less likely to have those kind of other implications. So tell me what kind of hearing aids are not large, cumbersome, and noisy? Well, one of the bigger um, advancements has been the ability of the uh, hearing aid manufacturers to, de to develop technology that doesn't whistle. Uh -huh. Okay, so we no longer have to put big, heavy plugs in people's ears. We can put little tiny. Can I show you? Yeah, what, show you know? me one here. Okay, I happen to be. You wearing had it some. in your ear this whole time. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yep. So, and that's that's uh, pretty typical of the type of hearing aids we wear see now. That just a moment. Let the camera focus okay. in on that. So, which one goes where? This goes in the ear. This little tip here goes in the ear, and this part has the chip and the uh, battery and the microphones in it, and that rests behind the ear. So it goes behind the ear. So you just fit. Mm -hmm. That's just a little bitty thing. I didn't. Know, I did not know you had one in your right. ear. So where is the chip? So it's in here. The chip is in this uh -huh. case right here. And it, right here is where... And, and this is pain. actually the speaker of the hearing aid that we put directly in the ear. There's a little wire that comes down this tube. Uh -huh. The speaker of the hearing aid is sitting in the ear, so we, the sound source is still right in the ear canal where it needs to be. But the beauty of this is that we're not plugging up the ear. It used to be people felt occluded. They felt like they were talking in a barrel. They were uncomfortable wearing hearing aids because we had. it's not natural to close your yeah. ear up. Well, what keeps it in the ear? I would think that thing would fly out. It, the, <laughs> this, the, yeah, it can, but the stiffness of this wire, this little tail that you see here uh -huh. also sits down in the, in the floor of the, uh, of the ear, of the outer ear, yeah. and that kind of braces everything. So you, it, it's made, do you sort of have to individualize in fitting, is every ear different? Or every ear is different, but we don't have to really make molds with these. We used to have to make impressions of the person's ear and have you know actual yeah. shells and moles yeah. made we just you know kind of approximate the, the the right size wire the right length wire and the right tip for people and there are various sizes of these now, there's different companies make different mm -hmm. ones which one do you like best doesn't mean it necessarily is the best but the one you use most is what the one that we like the best is a company called resound resound mm -hmm. why do you like them um, the sound quality of their hearing aids is really good um, why we like them because our people hear well with them. Our patients come back and say, I like my hearing aids. And that doesn't happen, didn't used to happen. When the people come back, is it important to bring a person back and say, how are you doing with it? Do we need to adjust any certain thing? Yeah, tip, typically we fit our, our patients with hearing aids. We send them away for about a week or so to get acclimated to it. And during that time, the hearing aids are only set to about half of what they're supposed to be set to, going back to that hearing loss didn't happen overnight, we can't correct it all at once, it's too much for that person. Um, so we have them come back in about a week and, and see how they're getting along, and make maybe a little adjustment to bring it up a little bit, and then a couple, three weeks later, we have them come back for their final adjustment.